Welcome back to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Podcast. I'm your host, TW, and with me is the man with the plan, BQ. Say what's up to the people. Yo, what up, everybody? Welcome to the Cool Factor, like he just said. Um, So apologies. This is coming out a little bit late. This was a hard week to record, mainly because we try to record on Fridays. That's not doable anymore. So we had to push that to Saturdays, but then we had the Royal Rumble this weekend. So that threw a wrench in everything. So I'm sorry that this is coming out so close to uh, the next episode of Impact, but that's the way it's going to be sometime. So, um, yeah, yeah you, man. You still get the content. You still get it for free. Shut up and like it. Shut your mouth. <laughs> do, you, do you remember when uh, Impact's Twitter, I think it was Josh Matthews, this was like four years ago, someone said tweeted something and they – Tweeted back like shut up, just shut up and watch or something like that. Oh, oh no, you no, know Josh, the that. Josh actually said it wasn't him. He goes, Sometimes oh, I am okay. on Twitter, but it wasn't me. But there was someone on Twitter that was like going at it with people from the impact. Yeah, account. yeah. Oh, funny. I do remember when Impact's Twitter account used to be trying to clap back at people. And I was like, Man, this just looks bad. Yeah. I do remember that. That was like, man, but you know what though? This was definitely during like um the 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 dixie carter is your yeah. uh mom going through substance abuse problems phase like this was like <laughs> really bad i mean you know listen i'm not gonna dive into this but you guys i paid very close attention to that lawsuit okay i paid very close attention to that lawsuit and i i even read some of the filings that were out there like it was bad it was bad there was like you know, and that had to be tough for the people who work there, right? Because it's like, you know, you're going to work re- literally risking your health and you don't know if your check's going to clear. And then you right. got to turn on social media and see, you know, nerds talking about why does the impact just go away? You know what I mean? And, you know, you, you got to deal with that. So it was a rough time. Like looking back on that, like impact was going through some things. So uh, you got to give yeah. props to the wrestlers too, because. There was, so I don't remember what year this was. It was during the Obama administration and they were going to withhold, and I'm talking about we with the military, they were going to withhold one of our paychecks. Mm. It was, I don't remember everything behind it. They were going to give it to us like a week later. And this is, just talking Billy about Corgan the, came in. No. <laughs> what was that? I said, then Billy Corgan came in and paid the Yeah, bill yeah, bill. yeah. No, yeah, he saved the day. So, <laughs> They were going to withhold them with our paychecks and they, we were going to get it later. It was, it was something going on with the government that I cannot remember. It was so long ago. And you're talking about the military here. We're paid on the first and 15th. We never have to had to worry about that. Nothing that one time, because they were like, Hey, they're not going to pay it. Like people were talking about almost like going on strike. Not even, we're not, don't even have a union, but there were just like, there was a Facebook group of like, don't show up to work on the oh 15th God. type of shit. You know what I mean? And you're talking like crazy military here. You know what I'm saying? Right. And uh, these wrestlers easily going through those times could have just not shown up. Not, you know, a lot of them just kept doing their thing, you know, like yeah, the show yeah, must go yeah. on and they did it, you know? Yeah. And, and again, it's even through all of that, you still look back on those eras and man, like impact had some dudes, man. They had, you know, they had Lashley and EC3 and Eli Drake and, you know, they, the, the Hardy stuff was cooking. I mean, like, yo, man, like through it all, they managed to put on some, some pretty good content. It's just yeah, impacts problem. I will say it until I'm blue in the face has for as long as we can remember impacts problem has been the perception of its brand. This idea that impact is going to fold any day now and everything they do is wrong and LOL TNA and all of that. You know what I mean? Like, that's always been Impact's uh, problem. And, you know, people, you know, the masses don't like to say, I'm going to look past that because I just want to enjoy the show. The masses want to be cool. So they go along yeah. with whatever the, the 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 thought leaders are saying. And, you know, if it's LOL TNA, then it's LOL TNA. So <laughs> that's what we got. Uh, but stepping out of the way back time machine and into today, what type of uh, impact stuff has been hot on your brain? I want you to 
answer that in just one second. But before you do, I need everybody at home to make sure you drop a comment down below this uh, video and let us know what you like, what you didn't like. And speaking of likes, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button so everybody knows how much you like this video. Hit the subscribe button so that you are subscribed to this channel and hit the notification bell so you get notified each and every time we drop some brand new fire content on this page. So make sure you hit that like button. Hit it right now. Hit it right I like now. The I like the segue there. Yeah, but what would you like and don't like? Speaking of like, hit that like button. <laughs> thank you. I can thank dig you, the thank segue. You. I, I do what I can. I do what I can. Uh, so as we were saying, what in the world of impact in the ring, out of the ring, anything news wise has been hot on your brain this week? So let's talk about speaking of the rumble. Let's talk about Mickey James's appearance in the Royal rumble. First, let's talk about prior. I mean, previously to the previous to the actual Royal rumble happening, um, Impact was doing a lot to promote the Royal Rumble. <laughs> they didn't. WWE doesn't need help. They were promoting the shit out of the Rumble, which, you know, I'm sure Impact added a lot of new Twitter followers and got a lot of hashtag clicks and all that good stuff. But what I wanted to take away from this is that so they put out a, a you know videos of the wrestlers talking about Mickey James being in the Rumble and you know the impact that it has on the company and wrestling and all this. That was exactly what I just wanted them to do for the ultimate X match. <laughs> like it shows that they can do that. It's easy. Right, right, you know? right, right. And, um, because you had to, you did have to promote that ultimate X match a little bit differently. Uh, because there was a lot of people out there who didn't understand what it was or the rules, you know, as far mm -hmm. as casual wrestling, not casual wrestling. Or even fans promote it at all. BQ. Promote it at all, right? Like, I mean, no, no sense in kicking a dead horse. Like, the, the, the day has come and gone. But uh, we talked about this on the show. I didn't see any promotion for the Ultimate X match outside of the Impact bubble that we're all right. consuming normally anyway. Yeah, and it was – um, and when I say casual wrestling fans, I don't, I don't mean, uh, you know, your neighbor who flips on wrestling sometimes. I just mean <laughs> right. people who are wrestling fans – but don't really care about impact, but they watch other stuff. Like they didn't know what ultimate X was. You, you, and right. I think impact really relied on the brand of, Hey, ultimate X is happening. And it was, okay, what's that? You know? So it showed that they're like capable of doing stuff like that, but it was, you know, so what they did for the rumble, that's what I wanted to see for ultimate X simple video packages, each of the knockouts talking. And, and like I've mentioned in the past, you know, yeah, as much they they'd love their freaking library. So show some AJ Styles doing some Ultimate X and shit like that. Make it, you know, relevant to, you know, what you're doing present day. But uh, that's not really what I'm, you know, <laughs> trying to focus on here. I just wanted to talk about that. But uh, so let's talk Mickey James in a Rumble. She came in in the twenties. I don't remember exactly what it was, and it was a pretty cool moment. Uh, I think the hardcore country hit and people didn't know who it was. <laughs> so, you know. I thought there was actually a pretty good pop. It was a good hardcore pop. Country. It was a good pop, but I think it was when the name Mickey James came across the screen. Yeah, true, true. There was true, an initial true. couple seconds. If you look at the crowd, they're just like. Oh. <laughs> no, so, I definitely uh, agree with that. I definitely agree with that. I think like once the name popped up, that's when people like really were like, what is that? And it's like, oh. but still, I mean, it's no different. Well, I was saying it's no different than like AJ Styles' debut in the Rumble, you know. Up, clear, right. Granted, no one ever heard that song before. Exactly. But it was, and everyone's like, even showed Roman Reigns, like, who the hell's this? Right. And then right. when it shows I am phenomenal, all of a sudden, you know. Right. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> but exactly. She, <laughs> but so she, she like, got the so, biggest pop. Yeah. 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 No, no. Yeah. I, yeah. Out of any woman, I think she definitely got the biggest pop. Right. And I, I mean, like, you know, you just you got to again, you, you, you got to give credit to her, especially to her. Right. I mean, like, I can't think of another wrestler who could have pulled that off. You know what right. I mean? Male or female. Um, there's so much talk from fans about, oh, now the WWE is in the forbidden door. I'm like, yo, like, there's not a fit. Stop with this. Stop it. Bad. Stop it. No forbidden door. Like, there's no forbidden door. WWE has just had mass firings this year, and they didn't have 30 women to put in the Royal Rumble. So, uh, plus, it's a great opportunity to trot out their legends 
who you know all the fans remember um and uh and yeah so like you know why wouldn't you use mickey james in that situation so um so yeah so they they absolutely they took the option to use mickey james um it was smart to use mickey james right there and i thought she did well like she you know she didn't embarrass herself you know she didn't come out and fall under the ring as she was running to the she fell ring, out of like, the ring <laughs> immediately upon trying to get in but yeah, well, but you know what they did? They rekindled an old thing she had with Michelle McCool, which I thought was great, right? Like, let's yeah. get right back. Let's rekindle something, work with somebody who you have some chemistry with. I thought it was actually really dope. So, um, yeah, I mean, like, I, I thought she did well. Like, you know, she didn't, you know, go in there and get dominated by Charlotte Flair. Like, did you see what Charlotte Flair did to that girl, Aaliyah, with the little purple bikini bottoms on? Like, she... Uh, <laughs> uh, I watched Aaliyah like, very closely. But I, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, but, but no, 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 no. But I mean, like, but she, do you see how she just bullied her around? Like, Charlotte oh, yeah. smacks girls around, throws them around. She is such a bully with other women in, in wrestling all the time. And so, like, in real life, too, I, was, I think. I probably. Uh, and so, like, <laughs> I was, I was a little worried that, you know, they were going to play Mickey, like, in some way, like that. I like, have her come in and, you know, get kicked out by, like I said, either dominated by Charlotte or, or even worse, like thrown out by some nobody, you know? And none of that happened. You know, she was in there and, you know, she lasted for a few minutes and, you know, eventually she got tossed out. But, like, that's fine, you know? That's fine. And the way they eliminated her was one of the more legit eliminations. You know, it wasn't one of those, like, they she jumped over the top rope herself. Because she's short, so it, it would be... It, it's, it's tricky to get Mickey James over the top rope, but... Right. The way they had Lita eliminate her, like they had another legend eliminate her. They didn't have, and I think that was very respectful towards her status and her being a mm-hmm. champion. You know, it wasn't like Aaliyah took her over so they could right. get her over. You know what I'm saying? Or exactly. they didn't you know, eliminate her. So I thought it was very classy. Uh, someone tweeted at Gail Kim about Lita wrestling Mickey James, yeah, Impact booking it, and um, you know. Gail was like, let's, let's do it at Slammiversary, you know? So yeah, yeah. I don't know that it would happen, but uh, I'm sure she will make the call. I'm, I'm sure Gail didn't just tweet that for her health, you know? So yeah, that'd be cool yeah. if it happened. But, uh, you know, Mickey's entrance was awesome. She was fired up. Uh, I watched that entrance a few times. Like, I, I got I got chills when it, when it happened. Um, she was like, Yeah, so I got to ask this question. Uh, most people I've talked to don't really care. I, I don't care, but I, I'm... I promise there's some hardcores out there who care. They announced her as an impact women's champion. Mm-hmm. Now on social media, they said knockouts, all that shit, but on the show, right. Women's champion. So I'm really curious. I don't know if you have your, have an opinion on why that is. I I'm curious if maybe the term knockouts, because you know, in WWE, the, they eliminated the divas term. Everyone's a superstar. And, you know, acknowledging someone being a knockout is a bit of a step back from their sure, brand, sure. where they're branding their yep, men and yep. women. So that's how, that's my personal opinion. I know that sounds, yeah. but I think that's all it is. I don't think it was like, oh, we're not going to promote that. Um, I, you know, I, I think that totally could be it. And actually, I wouldn't mind if that was the answer because I think that's a little more thoughtful. I thought it was just an oversight. You know what I mean? I think this, I think it's just like, um, you know, I can only imagine like how much stuff was on the the plate of the graphics producer for that day. You know what I mean? Because if you're the graphics producer uh, in that instant, you have to have graphics ready for everyone who is planned to be in the show, for everyone who's a backup on standby in case somebody, you know, doesn't make it out to the ring. You know what I mean? Like, let's say you had, you know, T- uh, five women test positive for COVID and they have to be sent home. Well, now you got to switch out five graphics, you know? Um, you got to have graphics ready for the winner of the match. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you always got to have some sort of uh, contingency graphics you can make on the fly in case, you know, something doesn't go as planned. You know what I mean? Like, like yes, you might have you might have a list that tells you that Roman Reigns is beating Seth Rollins. You know, what if fucking Roman Reigns drops dead in the middle of that match and Seth Rollins has to pin him? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. You, like, you gotta, you you gotta, as a graphics producer, you have to be ready for anything like that. So, 
it wouldn't shock me if it was just an oversight where someone was like, okay, this person is, she's the impact women's champion uh, and like, whatever, you know what I mean? Like, and, and it, I don't know. I, I didn't think it was insulting. Like, again, it's just, it's, it is what she is. It's the, the, the branding is off. Um, I don't think WWE would have gotten that wrong if it was like some sort of major partner, but, um, but I, I didn't think it was a big deal. I, I didn't, I didn't take it as any sort of slight. Like I said, I thought she was treated very well in the whole, mm. in the whole, uh, her entrance into the rumble. She got to wear the impact title out there. That was she cool. Brought the impact title. Um, she, she, had, uh, she had a backstage interview after the rumble, um, after being thrown out of the rumble and she had the impact title with her. And like, she was like choking back tears the whole time. It was just, it was really dope. And I'm really happy for these people. Um, like Mickey James, like Melina, you know, who have been wrestling in front of nobody. Um, and they get a chance to go wrestle in front of 40,000 people in a dome. Like that's damn awesome, man. That is damn awesome. And I can't imagine like what that feels like. You know what I mean? I know, especially yeah. for like, as a performer, I've even heard like triple H talk about this um, is like, you know, what if your music hits and then it's silence, you know, like every performer probably goes through that. They're like, oh man, they haven't seen me in a while. Like, are they going to accept me? Do they still like me? Do they remember me? Whatever it, whatever it is. And so I think for her, um, and you know, again, I, I think of Molina, I'm throwing Molina in this category too. It just like has to be a little bit overwhelming when you just are getting so much love and Mickey got a big pop, man. Yeah. She got a big pop. And so that had to be awesome because she was so hyped and it was, it was great to see. Yeah. And they showed her a lot more respect than they did the other. There, there was several legends. I'm going to use legends in quotes, a couple of them, you know, Summer Ray. Right. <laughs> I'm a summer. I'm I'm a Summer Rae fan personally. I think she also has the best theme song in WWE oh, history. Oh, so, man. um, but they they showed more respect than they did. Like Melina didn't even get offense, and she she looked like a fool. Uh, M- Mighty Molly looked like a fool. Uh, Ivory looked like a fool. I'm trying to think who else they had. Summer Rae. I think Summer Rae actually got to wrestle yeah, a little. I, I mean, the funniest thing about Summer Rae, right, is like. She, <laughs> so her and Natalia have been selling this, you know, like they have this personal feud. They've been selling it on social media. And she comes out and she takes like, you know, two, two, three steps down the aisle and she just runs down to the ring yelling, fuck you. <laughs> like, right that what she said? <laughs> oh my God. I didn't catch that. Go back and watch it again. It's so funny. And the camera is right on her. She's like, oh my god yeah 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 i'll I'll check that out i'm a summer ray guy though i I always have been but i mean she actually got some offense she even hit her finish at one point which no one knows her finish because she never won any matches around that that kick um it's kind of like alicia edwards like people don't know the flat liners or finisher because she doesn't beat anybody um her finisher is whatever the uh, her opponent is doing to her yeah there we go (laughs) Yeah, the finish she's taking, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but it was cool. She lasted 12 minutes in there. You know, she, she wasn't tossed out right away. She was, she was eliminated in a classy way that, you know, that showed respect to her. And then I think it was a, a cool touch for her to eliminate Michelle McCool. And, mm-hmm. you know, because that storyline was, was kind of bullshit back in the days. I mean, yeah. Piggy uh, James, I've, I've, she has I've, a I've better body. I, I, I definitely thought that was really gross, and I hated that. And that's one of my things. Uh, I'm gonna try not to rant here, but that's one of my things that I really, really, really hate about WWE is um, their consistent portrayal of a single type of uh, of body image uh, as beautiful. And yeah. um, and um, I mean, it's like various types of the same type of body image. You know, they see as beautiful. You know what I mean? And like. Um, and you don't have, they don't have to say it, right? Like, like they, you know, they call Carmella the most beautiful woman in WWE and they call, uh, Mandy Rose, like the God's creation or some shit. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. they say that, but then they also find a million and one reasons to put Alexa bliss on TV. You know what I mean? Like they, yeah. they, they find a million and one reasons, like how many chances have they given Liv Morgan? And this is like the first time she's done anything decent. You know what I mean? Uh, and it's like, it's, it's all about how she looks. 
And so like, you think people don't get those messages, people get those messages and I absolutely hate it. Like you mentioned about like Mickey James, they were doing the, the Piggy James thing back in the day and that shit was so trash. That shit was so trash. Like, yo, Mickey yeah. is bad, dog. Mickey has always yeah. been uh, an amazing looking woman. Always. Yeah, and, like yeah. she's gotten like finer as she's gotten older. You know yes. what I mean? Like, so, it, so it's, it's just, it's crazy that they would even do some bullshit like that. Like, um, you know, like they were like, you know, basically like calling her fat and shit. And I'm like, dog, like, again, she's in amazing shape. And like, you know, M- Michelle McCool is like this rail thin woman. And like, and, but this is the thing that, that just always annoys me again about like the WWE and like their image that they push as like beautiful. It's like, yo, everybody don't got the same taste. Everybody don't got the same, yeah. like, you know, what you call beautiful. Like again, Michelle McCool, you know, and, I, I really I don't like to objectify women, you know what I mean? But I'm I'm I'll say it like this. Every, that's not everybody's taste. You know what I mean? Mandy Rose ain't everybody's taste. You know what I mean? Like so um so you are constantly pushing this as beautiful and it's honestly like it's disrespectful to to other people because other people have different standards of of what they find attractive and for you to insist that this is the way you must be attractive, like that's just that's trash. And that's one thing yeah. that I think WWE got to do better about. I totally agree with that, man. So um, it was cool that she got a chance to kind of avenge that, though. So it, it was awesome. It, it was a great moment. Uh, it's funny. Some people thought Moose was going to show up at the Royal Rumble. Like, if you know anything about WWE, and I don't know <laughs> shit about it anymore. I, I watch the, I, I tend to watch the pay-per-views, and that's it. Um, do you have Comcast cable? No. Oh, okay. Well, I thought because my, my my boy actually texted me last night. He was like, "Yo, for some reason, I have the Royal Rumble." And like, so if you have um, if you have Comcast Xfinity cable, uh, Peacock comes standard as part of your package. So oh you god. Just, so basically, for all intents and purposes, like you have the WWE Network for free. Got so it. so like all the pay-per-views you just have for free and he's like yo he's like why do i have the royal rumble <laughs> like you know, <laughs> like back in the day that would have been an oversight on the cable bill somebody would have had to explain something you know what I mean? right <laughs> but yeah but, but you were you were saying how you watch the pay-per-views the, I was thinking yeah maybe this yeah so what i was saying was if you know anything about vince and wwe they are not going to put someone in a major match that they are worried people don't know right and they didn't want to put aj they, they were scared to put aj styles in a royal rumble Probably, you know, if anyone knows that, like AJ Styles was scared to be in the Royal Rumble because he's like, I don't think they know who I am. You know, if you ever heard him talk about it. So as much as we love Moose, Moose has gold and everything he does in in the grand scheme of the WWE universe. They don't know who he is. Mm -hmm. And it's weird that like bubble that wrestling fans can be in sometimes because I remember when they said, oh, well, EC3 is probably going to debut at the Rumble. I'm like. They don't know who he is. Uh, 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 now, now that that's, this is where I have to disagree with you. Actually, I actually do have to disagree with you on this because listen again, the consistent opinion and narrative is that nobody watches impact. Nobody knows people from impact, yada, yada, yada. But every time an impact person shows up on WWE TV, it gets a huge, it gets a huge reaction. Again, Mickey James, she got the hardcore country music. Uh, people pop big for her. Um, I was in the stadium in Orlando when the Hardy Boys came back, and I would say if there was if there was forty thousand people in there, twenty thousand of them were doing delete, delete, delete. Right. Okay. Like that happened on Impact TV. Okay. Like when EC3 showed up on um, on NXT, NXT Takeover, huge, who huge pop. Bobby Roode shows up on NXT TakeOver. Huge pop. So I just don't, I, I don't know, man. Like, I think there's a lot of closet Impact fans out there. And I think that because the narrative is, that, like, I, I, I think people watch Impact and won't talk about it because other people won't talk about it with them. You know what I'm saying? It's like if you, yeah. it's like if, um, if, uh, if, uh, it's like if, if, if something embarrassing happened and you just never were, were admitted to somebody, you know what I mean? It was like, well, one day you told your friend, like, hey, man, like, uh, when, 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 when Mr. Johnson told that joke in class, I laughed so hard, I peed a little bit. <laughs> it's like, and, right. And it's like, dude, 
me too. You know, like, you know, I mean, that's and that's what people see about, feel about Impact Wrestling. Like, I know people be watching it, dog. I know people. Like, there's some people who I think are just like completely clueless. Like, they literally don't watch watch anything with WWE. And um, like, whatever, it is what it is. But I think a lot of people just want to. They just have this 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 big time attitude about Impact. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, nobody watches it. It's not popular. You know, whatever. So, but I bet a lot of those same people. If you get into, if they're around people who are having a conversation about impact, they'll start paying attention to it. Like, I think that's just, I think it's just that simple. Yeah. It, it probably what I said was not a good, I, I probably didn't word that properly. Most people know who EC3 is, um, but not to the point that I, I think the, the NXT universe at the time was a different audience in the WWE universe. You know, there's a lot of right, people who right. don't. Yeah, there are people who don't watch anything else but WWE. I just don't yes. think people understood the EC3 character. I mean, it was Dixie Carter's nephew, so how do you even brand that <laughs> in WWE? Which clearly they couldn't, you know. But right. I'm just saying, AJ Styles in the history of the Royal Rumble is the only debut of that sorts they've ever had. Yeah, and every year they've oh Kenny Omega's coming. This and I was like, dude, no, he's not. I promise, <laughs> you know, and um, so there was a better chance of me in the rumble than Moose. Like, I just knew he wasn't <laughs> going to be there. Like, you know, if he's, I'm just saying not a big enough portion of the audience would be like, oh, shit, Moose is here. Like, because there's, I, I promise you, dude, I'm, should I live here? Like, I almost went to the rumble in St. Louis because it's only, I, I mean, I work in St. Louis. My my old lady just didn't want me to go, so I didn't go. But there's, I, I can tell you there's a bunch of people in there that are just casual wrestling fans. It is a great wrestling town, but there's yeah. a bunch of people there that just, they're just there for the WWE brand, you know? So right. they, I'm just saying they weren't going to, Moose was not going to come out there. I mean, it's insane. They didn't even do the NXT people this year like they have done in the past, you know? Right. So, but that literally is a bunch of nobodies, that show. Let me not yeah. go and get off on that. So um, let's let's oh the last thing I want to say you know who because I'm not a WWE guy you know who I really was impressed with was uh Sonya Deville. Mm. So one of my favorite wrestlers in the world, Allie the Bunny, she hits people and it doesn't look like like it hurts. Yeah, you know she'll do that running forearm in the corner and it's just like she's just yeah. you know, like that's the impact <laughs> that it delivers and like Sonya Deville was hitting girls I was like God that looks like it hurts that's painful yeah, like yeah. she's wrong you know so i kind of dug it but i i kind of kind of became a fan of her so you know i know she now, I, I, I like she she's definitely like one of uh one of the people who i thought it's 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 interesting man because like i say this about impact all the time is like i'd like them to do more like um like sports style presentation with their knockouts like make it more about the competition more so than the character and wwe is much the same way like they have their big dogs, right? Like, like again, you know, Charlotte Flair, Sasha Banks, Bianca Belair. And listen, when when WWE wants to sell you a big match, it's about the match. Um, but so much more of what they do is about characters and silly stories. And so they've settled Sonya Deville into this, you know, GM type of role on on uh, Raw and SmackDown. And she hasn't been in the ring in like a year. She hasn't like she uh, she wrestled. Uh, you remember the story about the stalker like breaking into her apartment? Yeah, whatever. and um, which is wild, wild. Um, but yeah, but but I but I always like every time I see her like get rolling in the ring, you know, like I, I always look at her. I'm like, man, like she. I feel like she has such potential to be really good. I just don't know, man. Like I I think that when it comes to Vince McMahon. It's like, if you don't look like his vision of a model, like you can't be his top pick. If you don't A, look like his vision of a model or B, look like a super athlete, then he just can't see you as like a star star. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, again, like look at the people who get that spot, right? Like Charlotte Flair, super athlete. And, you know, pick a, <laughs> she, she has lots of looks, let's just say. And, um, <laughs> And, you know, Sasha Banks, super duper fucking star. But I, it's not even really fair for me to mention her in that conversation because they don't give her her, her deserved shine at all. Uh, Bianca Belair, super athlete, also beautiful, also charismatic. Like, you know what I mean? The, the whole whole super package. 
And so like, if you don't fall into that like elite category, you know what I mean? Then um, it's just tough, man. You're just trying to find a way to stay on the show. And I think that like, I think Sonya Deville as a talent, like she's someone who, if she were to go to like an impact and like just really work on her craft, like she's somebody who people could be talking about as like, oh my God, you see this amazing wrestler. Like you see the stuff she's doing in the ring and like all of this and all of that. But I mean, but why would you ever, you know, leave the money and glitz and glamour of WWE? Like if you got to, you know, if you got to yeah. play a, a, a secondary role just to be on the show and keep getting that check, then why wouldn't you, you know? Right. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe she'll be fed up with it one day. Who, who knows? So let's move on from rumble talk. Um, what else can we talk about here? So, uh, let's talk about the Bayou. The, what's up? Mm. Let's talk about the reality show thing. Let's talk about the reality show. Let's do that. So I don't know if you guys had uh, seen this out there, but I saw, um, if I'm, if I'm saying this wrong, like you can fill in the gaps for me, but uh, I saw a report that there is a reality show in development with, um, I think it's Diamond Dallas Page, and who else is involved? Uh, it's, it's Diamond Dallas Page, and there's a, there's another name. It's, it's a name that people will know, um, and it's gonna, there's going to be a reality show uh, just, like, following, you know, wrestlers to, like, kind of, you know, supposedly, like, a gritty personal look. When I was reading this description, it reminded me of, like, Beyond the Mat. And like uh, that type of content where it's like really just following wrestlers through like their independent life, um, you know, just just trying to make it and, and catch a big break. But the um, the hook of this show is that two people are going to be selected to get impact wrestling contracts, I guess, at the end of it, which I think is really interesting. And they should probably extend it to a second season to see what happens to them once they get to impact. You're because right. As we all know. That's where the fun journey begins with these reality shows as far as impact and selecting a winner. Um, I ain't seen Shogun in like a year and a half until he showed up on the, the what was that shit? The, um, the, <laughs> the way back or whatever. Yeah. That no one watched. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, man, I think it sounds like a really interesting concept. I think like, you know, having, um, having people involved who, don't typically do wrestling stuff i think that can definitely give it uh, a fun unique feel you know like i love wrestling content like i'll i'll, I'll consume it i'm sure and um uh, but again i think the i don't know if pitfall is the right word but the thing that if you're someone who has watched these impact you know pick a winner challenge type shows in the past you can't be too excited about what's to come because what has come of this in the past yeah, so a few years ago they did Global Forged, and it was so fucking bad. Uh, you know, they they recorded more a lot more content for it than what we saw on the screen. But we what we saw, we didn't. You know, Rohit Raju was the winner at the time. Hakeem Zayn, Jake something was part of it. I think uh, Bupin. Uh, no, I think he was part of the gut check. But um, we didn't emotionally connect to the characters. They didn't tell us who they were. You know, we didn't get any kind of video packages, nothing. They just showed this shit every, every week. It was right. a couple minutes. Um, the very anticlimactic announcing of the winner, you know. Um, it was very poorly done. It, it freaking sucked. And, you know, he showed up. He was Hakeem Zayn. That did not work. Then he was Rohit Raju. At first, that didn't work because, you know, as someone who knows him personally – they they did the Desi Hit Squad. They had no direction for it. Uh, there was no plan for the team. Not even all the members of the team even showed up. Um, and then they would they would wrestle. They would lose. And then nothing like there was no momentum whatsoever. He made his own momentum. He took it to the you know his growth from the beginning of the company. I mean beginning of his time with the company compared to the end. That was all him. That wasn't no okay, we're, we're going to do this with you or whatever. Like, he, he took control. Not every wrestler is like that. And, uh, you know, you brought up Shogun Jackson Stone. They had gut check. They have shown right now. It's funny when this came out, this news about this show, it was no shit a couple days before that. Someone brought up gut check to me. I'm like, 
they better never do that again because that <laughs> means it means nothing. Right. And Shogun's a pretty cool character, man. It's I don't think they know what to do with him. I don't think they have the first clue. And you can't be like, well, he's not he's not ready because I mean because some the people they've put on the screen before. So it may right now it means nothing to win these shows. Because with Rohit, he's not even in the company anymore. Now, granted, he left on his own, but they didn't value him enough to keep him around. And with Jackson Stone, like, I mean, people tell me they, they see him setting up chairs before the shows. Like, you know, this dude's like still paying his dues, you know? Like, what, what's he got to do to get on the screen? Right. Um, right. You know? Yeah, like, seriously, like, I, yo, <laughs> Lewis gets a lot of interviews. Lewis, interview this guy. Okay. He has. <laughs> he has. Uh, oh, he has? Yeah. And, and what does he say? I mean, like, I just, I want to know. I need to look that up and I need to I need to find it because I want to just know, like, you know, what's this guy's life been like? Um, I just I, it has to be frustrating. Right. Because you, you have to feel like your your career and in some cases your life is stuck in neutral. Right. And it's not your doing that has to be miserable. Right. Yeah. No, continue. No, I was just gonna say, like, just just imagine that. Imagine, like, just be like, oh, like somebody's telling you, oh, just wait on a promotion, just just wait, it's coming. You're 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 next up. You're coming. Your 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 time is coming. Like, just imagine that, right? And you just, and you're sitting there like waiting on the word go. Like that has to feel awful. And you know they ain't paying him shit. You know what I mean? And so yeah. like um so like that 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 has to be like really really tough. Um, like I don't know for him if it's like if he's trying to you know, work indies while he helps continue to develop. But like, I, you know, I don't know. I don't follow or do, I think I do follow him on social media. I don't really see every, anything from him. Um, that just, that has to be rough, man. So like, um, and, and by the way, Impact, you got to understand that this is what is going to happen when people who have experience watching your reality shows or these competitions, however you want to call it, this is going to be the conversation. They're going to say, well, what happened to the last person who won? Right. And they've gone on a milk carton, you know? So, like, I don't know how you don't just bring this guy on and just give him something to do. Even if you don't want to expose his Shogun character, like, put him under a mask and have him work something else, you know, some, some other type of way. So, I don't know, man. I just, I just, I, I can't possibly have any faith that they're going to use whoever uh, wins this show unless, you know, somehow you know, John Cena is a contestant on the show. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. But even if John Cena was a contestant on the show, they still wouldn't use him, you know, if he didn't have that WWE branding. So, yeah, yeah, right. you know, do better. The, the, you know, when they did the gut check, I thought I enjoyed what they did with it on, on screen with Bravo and all them. I enjoyed it. I would have liked them on YouTube to put it full episodes together and give people an opportunity, again, to connect to the competitors so that was completely missing from both of these versions they've done in the past. Us being able to connect and care. Like I re when I remember the last season of Tough Enough. Like that was so it was horrible. But I still remember most of the people that were competitors on the show. Like Chelsea Green was on there. I remember a lot of the I remember some of the storylines and all the crap. As bad as that show was, I think it was on in 2015 or something. Horrible. I still remember majority of the cast because they they did enough to connect with the viewer. Now, granted, that was a half hour show. I'm comparing that to you know five minute gut check segments, but um, hopefully it's done it's done right because the journey is also what happens after you win. You know, people right. people were gonna care. They they want to know, and um, you know, right now we're seeing that the track record isn't good. You know, I said the same thing with the call your shot gauntlet when they did it the first time, and 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 it nothing happened with it. I was like, well, it means nothing to win that. Now they're, you know, fast forward a couple years later, Moose cashes in, Rhino cash in. I was like, okay, now it's starting to mean right. something. But, you know, at first I was like, I don't care about that battle royal, you know? So I, I think mm -hmm. it's going to be really similar with this. But I'm, I'm curious, I'm, I'm very interested to see it because there's, you know, um, it's not an impact-driven, pro you know, product necessarily. Yeah. So, yeah. you know... We'll see, I think but Impact it, needs to hire like a a digital originals producer, right? Like some they need to hire somebody to produce um, the type of content that they're still running on their 
you know, their, uh, their, their platforms today, like when they used to do like TNA's greatest hits and, you know, unfinished business, all that stuff. Like they got people in like, uh, I just, I don't want to get started, but like, again, <laughs> the, the second that fucking Chris Bay signs with NXT, you know what I mean? Like they're, they're going to be playing all the Chris Bay matches. Well, it's like, damn it. You got Chris Bay here right now. You got Eric Young here right now. Like he's had a fantastic career. Madison Rain, Madison Rain could probably sit you down for a three disc set telling stories about her career. You know what I mean? Like, why aren't they doing this? And I, I mean, I think the answer is because they, they don't have, you know, a, a position where anybody is dedicated to doing this, but that's like dope content they could be doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like create content. Uh, you, you got this YouTube platform. You got the Impact Plus pa- platform. Like, create some some original content that people want to see. Like, some behind the scenes. Like, you know, sit down with Jordan Grace. Talk about, like, how she's transformed her body. And, like, you know, she's a power lifter on the side. And, like, you know, what's her goals and all this other stuff, man. Like, you know, talk to Rich Swan. Like, you got people who have interesting stories. Talk to Moose. You know what I mean? Like, what must the 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 last year or so been like for Moose? Like, just waiting on that opportunity he didn't know was ever going to come. You know what I mean? To get the the call to be the the world champion. So, I don't know, man. I think like they got opportunities for content right there that they could create and circulate. But you know, we talked about last week about them increasing the budget. You know, they need to funnel some of that budget into creating content. Just more original content for people to watch and consume because like how long you want us to watch the fucking jeff jarrett kurt angle story you know (laughs) you know like it was cool man it was cool but at this point that's like 10 years ago dog you know like what what are we doing yeah it's like the dude who peaked in high school so it's still telling you about you know um (laughs) you know back when i was the you know quarterback and you know, through 10 touchdowns in, in one <laughs> yeah. quarter, you know, like it, it, it's, it's so reliant on that. So, you know, we're talking about the Royal Rumble. So there was, it was last year. Yeah, I think it was last year's. Uh, that was the first WWE anything I'd watched in a really long time. And they were promoting during the Rumble, you know, after the show, Stone Cold's going to sit down with Sasha Banks and they're going to do, you know, do the, the podcast. And I watched that, loved it. And when I was done with it, I was like, Impact is missing this. Now, Impact doesn't have Stone Cold Steve Austin, but they're missing this like raw sit down interview. And I don't mean like around the ring on explosion, Josh Matthews asking silly questions over music. Um, They've been doing this music in the background and stuff for a while. Mm -hmm. But I remember around the ring, like, fuck cares dude it was it was just I, I never really cared i'm talking about like sitting down raw emotion you know in this interview sasha banks was talking about wanting to quit wrestling and shit like that like man i was so connected to her after that you know it's i, I they were they were they took the rumble high, you know probably their second highest you know uh viewed pay-per-view every year And they bounced, you know, hey, when the show's over, don't go anywhere. We bounce you from this platform to the next. And um, they're they're missing that, man. I've I've been talking about that for a while. They're they're missing their original content. Absolutely. But they're just missing so much where we can just like really connect. I don't mean peel back the curtain too much and, you know, you know, but give us something. Just like you said, just like you said, like, you know, that, um, uh, Stone Cold has become a really excellent interviewer over the years, by the way. Like he, yeah, he's a yeah. really, he's a really excellent interviewer. Um, but like, you gotta have somebody on, on your staff, you know what I mean? Or, you know, who is maybe not that good, good of an interviewer, but just like, you know, like, but, but, but uh, duh, that's what producers are for. Hello. You can hire somebody who will do the research, write you some questions that you just got to sit down and ask and have a conversation. Right. Like, right. That's what producers are for. And so, um, so again, like, just like, again, the content is right there, man. Like, you know, you bring people in, you want to, you know, have them tape, you know, a month of TV in two days. Like, well, you know what? Like, just, just book another day, you know, be like, yo, man, can you stay for, 
you know, for an extra day so we can shoot a documentary with you. You know what I mean? Shoot some interviews. And you can tell, by the way, like if you watch the content on WWE Network, you can tell that like all the clips with Eric Bischoff, right, from five different documentaries, they were all shot on the same day, right? So they brought them in there and they were like, hey, Eric, we want to ask you something about the history of WrestleMania. We want to ask you something about the history of the Monday Night War. We want to ask you about the time you had on Monday Night Raw. We want to ask mm-hmm. you about, you know, podcasting with Conrad. You know what I mean? And and like, they'll just they'll be like, hey, man, we got you for a day. Let's just, let's knock some of this stuff out. And like, again, it, you know, from a logistics standpoint, it just comes down to planning. You know what I mean? Like you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have, like I said, you gotta have a position for a, a, a digital producer who's going mm-hmm. to, uh, whose job it is to book these things. And then like, it's doable. You know what I mean? But like, yeah. I think like as fans, we would love that type of content. Like go ahead and you tell us uh, for everybody watching this, would you guys be interested in more of that original type of content from Impact Wrestling? Um, if so, like, go ahead and drop your comments down below. Tell us what type of original content you might be interested in watching, you know, on the Impact YouTube channel or uh, or on Impact Plus or, you know, anything like that. And I think I wanted, well, before I say this, I remember watching Table of Three. I thought that was genius, you know, and again, that's, you got specialized people in positions to come up with. It, what's essentially just three people talking, but how can we find a, an original way to do it that is, that is exciting and makes sense? And, and that was really, really good. Um, now I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, oh, no, I think I expected too much out of the Impact Plus app initially because mm-hmm. I wanted it to be the, the WWE network. Right. And yeah. it turns out like it was really just, hey, we need somewhere, one place to put our library. Mm-hmm. That, that's all it was. Like I wanted it to be you know, the, have the table of three type of stuff in the original content. And that just never happened. Right. Um, but but, but they, they were producing that, right? Like back in, in, in the, like, <laughs> listen, for as much of a wild card as Jeff Jarrett was, like he had a good feel for what to do. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, um, <clears throat> like, you know, I'd hire Jeff Jarrett, man. I'd hire him and give him a job and and an apprentice okay <laughs> like yeah like, a babysitter and then i'd hire somebody and be like look man your job is to learn every fucking thing from this man everything he's doing you know everything from from a business standpoint you know what i mean so that if he's ever off the job for a day if we ever got to fire him because we will have to fire him then you need to be able to you know pick up the ball and keep running uh you, you know but but i think man like he's good like he's good you know yeah. what I mean? Like this is the type of stuff that was going on when Jeff Jarrett was, you know, there. And then when they brought in the um the Bischoff and Hervey team, like they were producing like all, all of that type of stuff. Um, but yeah, man, it's it's just it's about hiring competent people who have a feel for the business, right? A feel for what wrestling is and how to sell it. You know what I mean? Like uh, uh you know, again, you know, uh Eric Bischoff talks all the time about all the stuff he and Jason Hervey as a team have produced. And, um, you know, like they, they, they do this, you know what I mean? So they were producing tons of that stuff, you know, that that's probably the era actually in which a lot of that content got produced, you know, the TNA's greatest matches, the unfinished business, like all of that yeah. stuff, um, that probably all came under the Bischoff Hervey, uh, era when they were, when they were dealing with the, with the, with, 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 with the company. And so again, yeah, that's, that's what it is, man. Like, you know, you find yourself a real production company. And um, yeah, and 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 hire them to produce some content with you, you know, like, but you got to cut a check. You know what I mean? That's that's what it all comes down to. You got to cut yeah. a check. You can't just be like, oh, hey, can you do this? You know, you got to be like, okay, hey, um, we're we're gonna we're gonna pay you X amount of dollars, and I want you to produce me, you know, five digital, you know, original series this year. Um, but that's gonna cost a good chunk of money. But I think it also can make you a good chunk of money because again. They're still using that content today. Yeah. So like, so you, so, you know, you can't front on the value of having that type of stuff. Like it's, it's super value. So, yeah. So I think we should move into the episode here. I th- we were going to talk a little bit about some other stuff, but you know, we, we went yeah, long yeah, on yeah. here, so we'll, we can, we can hit it next week, but yeah, let's talk, uh, let's talk this good episode. Another, another pretty solid episode. All right, let's, let's, let's do this um, because we'll actually 
we'll have a follow-up question that I think we kind of skipped and I think will be actually pertinent after we review the episode. So, um, so here we go. This episode, let's see, did they start with the BTI stuff? Bah, 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 bah. I didn't get a BTI chance to stuff. watch it this week. Um, I mean, I typically don't watch it, but I, I think it was Laredo Kid and uh, Blake Christian, so I, yeah. I would like to see that. Um, it seems like so BTI, they're fine. Like, and this was another thing I was kind of talking about too. BTI has to matter. And when I say has to matter, it just it has to be a match people actually want to watch. If you're just like, oh, you know, this week it's Falaba versus her nan-daddy in a, you know, ass-grab match. You know, like, <laughs> gra- grab-ass match. That's what I meant to My say. My God, that's his ass! That man yeah. has a family! <laughs> <laughs> you know... You, you're doing that kind of shit, dude. Um, no one, no one, no one's gonna care. And then the rest of the episode is a bunch of clips. Again, who the fuck cares? So, I would like to see them do more with that show in general because I actually think Josh and Gia do a really good job with it. Mm-hmm. Um, Gia, this show has helped Gia grow a lot on screen. Uh, but I just think there's more they could. I remember at first, I remember like we fucking watched the show. They used to have the first couple. So you know they had like the studio setting and wrestlers would come in almost talking smackish mm-hmm. and uh, talk to, like that's. I don't think they're doing anything like that anymore. I think it's a clip show and then a bullshit match. So now it seems like the last couple of weeks is like okay, we're gonna give you something that semi matters or something that you actually want to tune in and watch. So, um, yeah, I mean, you can always do a, a, a great match with like, because you got people who just like, we just, again, we just mentioned Shogun, put a Shogun match on BTI. I'll watch it. I want to see, you know, what's yeah. up? you know, like you can always, you got people you're not using, like, you know, damn it, put Jake something on, on BTI and let him dominate, you know, like, yeah, you can, there's stuff you can do, man. You just got to put some thought into it. You know, it's a great place to get reps for. Uh, the Savannah Evanses of the world, the Rachel Ellerings of the world. You know what I mean? Like the people who could use some reps. So right. like, yeah, I mean, I think BTI can be very useful. We'll see. Maybe, maybe, maybe it'll grow into that. Who, who knows? Um, to answer your question real quick though, about uh, Lewis did interview Jackson and Jackson stone. And you got to understand when people are under impact contract, like that, that's why I don't even push for the interviews anymore. They won't give them to me, but that that's why I don't push for them. Because when they're under contract, there's a certain way the interview's got to go. And they're mm-hmm. also going to be very careful in what they say. You know, right. and it's always going to be very promotional about, about, about what they're doing. So um, I actually will have my first interview here in, um, in two years. And it's going to be the last person that I interviewed two years ago. It's going to be Rohit Raju. And that's going to be my new, uh, my new thing. I'm going to be interviewing wrestlers that uh, have departed Impact Wrestling so that I'm under no... Um, no parameters of what I have to say and what I have to ask and how they have to respond. Like, did you, know, did you run a foul of someone during an interview or something? Did you ask something you weren't supposed to ask, or did you? No, nah, uh, man. I I just I'm just BQ, who's honest about the product, and um, yeah, yeah, you know, they 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 hate you for all your Alicia Edwards T-shirts. <laughs> yeah, it must must be what it is. <laughs> but you know, but uh, you know, but it is my plan to sit down, uh, you know, talk to wrestlers, really just understand what happened, yeah. get real with them. Uh, no one can tell either of us what what can be said, what can't be said. I don't have to run yeah. nothing by nobody. So that's uh that's how we're gonna do it. I mean, that's dope, that's man. That's dope down. content. Yeah, I just got a little a little a little sneak preview of what's coming up. So keep your ears peeled for that. So uh, speaking of BTI and people who could or should be featured on BTI, we got Chris Bay versus Jake something kicking off this episode of Impact. Two of professional wrestling's greatest young athletes collide as the Bullet Club's Chris Bay battles Jake something. Bay attempts a moonsault, but Jake catches him midair and drops him face first on the apron. Jake charges, but Bay sidesteps causing him to crash into the steel ring post. Bay flies with the top rope swanton to the outside. Bay remains in control with a neck breaker for two. 
Jake fights out of a sleeper and hits a back suplex to create separation. Jake hits a huge power bomb, but Bay kicks out. A flurry of offense culminates with Bay spiking Jake on his head with a reverse Rana. Jake catches Bay and hits the black hole slam to win. You know, this description does not do this match justice. This was a good, fun watch. I really enjoyed this watch. Jake something finally got a win. I thought that was great. Then after the match, the Bullet Club's Gorillas of Destiny attacked Jake something from behind. Speedball Mike Bailey uh, attempted to even the odds but fall victim to the numbers when Switchblade Jay White joined the fray. The Bullet Club lays out Jake something and Mike Bailey before Gorillas of Destiny lay out a challenge to the Impact World Tag Team Champions, the Good Brothers. What would you think about this? So fun match. Uh before I get into the match, the first thing we notice when the show kicks on is that the Iceman uh, is the, the ring announcer. You know, I typically found him annoying on the Twitch stuff they did and even like the little bit of BTI I've seen. Like, I find his gimmick a li- on the annoying side, but um, he, it is that that's just what he does. That's his gimmick. So it's, it's all good. I thought he sounded excellent ring announcing. I thought it was a huge. I still would like to see Melissa Santos out there. You know, when I was watching a Royal Rumble, I was watching the the chick that is out there, Samantha, whatever. Uh-huh. Um, I don't think she's particularly good, but she's very good looking, uh, mm-hmm. and I think it adds something to the show a little bit. Um, I don't think. By she the has- way, I cannot let this show go by without saying the Molina and Sasha Banks impromptu bust it challenge. Woo, buddy! That was my <laughs> Rumble moment of the day. Uh, <laughs> We all know that that, you know, I think the Molina elimination was a little bit of a botch. I think they were supposed to do something else. I think she slipped off the apron. But Sasha Banks is so good. She, she, you know, a, a common thing you see amongst wrestlers is teasing other wrestlers by mocking their little poses or whatever it is they do. But nobody does this better than Sasha Banks. She taunts wrestlers with their own stuff, but she does it at the right time where it just feels like so biting, like so stinging. And it was funny because when Melina, like I I mentioned, you know, a few, oh my God, when Melina first came back on NWA, I was happy because I was like, ooh, Melina's thick now. I was like, okay, this is great. And, uh, And I'm not saying this like a derogatory way if there's any women out there. I'm just saying I appreciate the you know listen some people look better when they carry a little more weight you know what i mean she's a latina you know what i mean she is built for it ladies and gentlemen like don't (laughs) don't uh don't don't hide your blessings okay don't hide your blessings and melina got blessings so um, those blessings are more on display now you know now that she's uh carrying a little more and when she went to get into the ring you guys know the famous melina split she did that and she didn't give us one split oh no she uh was bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. And listen, the pastor said God is in the blessing business, okay? And so God gave us all some blessings at the Royal Rumble. Let the church say amen. And then at the after Melina got tossed out, Sasha mocked her pose, and then Sasha dropped down and dropped it low, low, low. <laughs> I thought that was cool, yeah. That was funny. And um, I know she was just trying to be funny, but damn it. I appreciated it for so many reasons. Okay. It worked. It worked. <laughs> I'm glad you were able to get that off your chest. Uh, but uh, but no, I thought I thought Iceman sounded um, really good as a ring announcer. But my, my point was, you know, I think uh, old girl in the WWE, I don't think she's particularly very good. I don't think she has enough bass in her – bass is probably not the right word – enough boom in her voice to be a, a ring announcer. But, um, but she looks really good, and it added something to the, the product visually. You know, so um, I, th- I think uh, most people would like to see Melissa Santos in that role. She's very good. But if we don't get that, I think um, I don't know if this is specific for the tapings. I hope not, because it sounded a lot better, a lot clearer. You know, and even when Jake something came down, he said, you know, coming down the aisle, his opponent, this is Jake something. And if it was Penzer, he'd just be like, and his opponent, Jake something. No, nothing. No, you you know, like he just would say it so fast that it it was like he was a jobber coming down, you know. So I thought this dude sounded good. Uh, Ray Wall was on commentary, 
Mm-hmm. I didn't particularly enjoy him when he filled in about a week or so ago. Mm-hmm. But now that I got to hear him a whole episode, I was like, I like him. He's natural, uh, which is something. God, that's what I was asking for. That's what I kept saying with Stryker and D'Lo. I was like, this shit is so fake. And uh, you can't say that about these guys. They sound they sound good. So, But Bay versus Jake something. This was, I wrote down here, this was a match between two people who needed a win and, can't, and couldn't afford a loss. Right. <laughs> so um, Jake something gets a win. They actually gave his finisher a name where I don't remember what it was. It was some because I couldn't fully understand what they were saying. Um, but, you know, what was D'Lo and, and Stryker and Josh Matthews calling the whole oh, the black hole slam? Like, that's Abyss's move. Mm-hmm. So you're going to tell me he doesn't have a name for his finisher. Right. Uh, so. It was just a nice attention to detail. Like you have to brand the wrestlers. You know, this is what I always said. The finisher is part of their brand. And when you start, you know, naming, oh, you know, he hits the, uh, I'm I'm trying to think. Like when Marty Bell used to use the, uh, which essentially is the pedigree, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, but she called it protect your neck. She calls it something else now. It's better in NWA. I can't remember what the name is. Oh, the pedigree. Or when so oh the code breaker like right yeah Jericho. no you you are hundred percent right hundred yeah. percent right and, uh, and and you're right though you, you, it's just there's no better way to say that like it's protecting the brand of the wrestler and listen that's a top down thing that is a top down thing you know um, we've all read and heard stories about how much of a psych- <clears throat> psychopath Vince McMahon is with details about things about oh, oh pronouns pal you know it's all this type of shit but you know what they get the messaging out. You know yeah. what I mean? They get the messaging out. Like so many people will know a sharpshooter as a sharpshooter instead of a scorpion deathlock because they because Vince McMahon and the branding. You know what I mean? So yeah. um so yeah man, you know what I mean? Like like it and, and it should be that way. It should be and that it, way because it's better for all parties involved. It would have been, that move move would have never been the same if it wasn't the sharpshooter. If it was just the scorpion deathlock and you relay that relate that to Sting, you're just doing someone else's move. Right. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So exactly. <laughs> so awesome. I'm I'm glad he has a name for his finisher. Um yeah. but they turn this into a storyline. And what's cool is that they're they getting Mike Bailey involved in stuff right away, mm-hmm. storyline wise. I didn't want him to become like you do you remember when Desmond Xavier yeah. debuted? years ago he was just a dude that we were praying was going to be on the show every week never was every once in a while would show up be amazing and then disappear again and there was no stories there was no consistency and i didn't want to i didn't want that to be for for mike bailey i want to see him do his thing because he's exciting um you know so so they're already got him involved in a little storyline with jake uh you know kind of Look like they might be pairing them up a little, you know, even though they just had a match a couple of weeks ago. So the match was good. Um, and Gorilla's a destiny. I thought, I don't know much about them. I know who they are, but I don't watch New Japan for shit. And um, I thought they came off very cool. It, it was, uh, you know, pardon the pun, like they had a, just a cool factor that uh, <laughs> is missing from a lot of the Impact wrestlers. You know, and that was that's why we named the podcast this. You know, that uh, somebody Don Callis said, "Hey, Impact's missing a cool factor," and they've improved that over the years drastically. Right. But I, I thought these guys just came off really cool, and mm. um, you know, I, I'm I'm interested to see them get some promo time and and have some matches and stuff. Since I don't know a whole crap yeah, load yeah. about them, you know, um, but they're gonna make the Good Brothers serious for a little while. So yeah. No, yeah, and, can... and look, that could be good, right? That could be like the thing that the Good Brothers have been missing um, to bring out something in them that like, I mean, like, you know, we've said it uh, uh, so many times, like the Good Brothers just seem like a caricature of whatever they were that people loved. And like, as someone who didn't get to see whatever it was that people loved, I just see them now as people who look like they're just collecting a check and um yeah. like they 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 don't look like they're truly invested in making good tv 
You know what I mean? Like, I just, I just, you know, I don't mean that as like an insult to them. I'm just saying that like, they look like they, they remind me a lot of like Kevin Nash in like 98, 99, where it was like, you know, he's had on like his bandana and he was just like, seemed he was just like too cool for everything. And it was like, dog, like, you don't look like you give a fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this is not coming off to me like you want to win the championship or like anything. Like, you just don't look like you give a fuck. You look like you're just like you like you're you're too cool just to even be here. And I, I feel like I get a lot of that from the Good Brothers. You know what I mean? Like, I like they've had the Impact Tag Team titles for some reason, like uh, uh, on a stranglehold, mostly because Impact doesn't really have a tag team division. Like, we're being honest. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, like, um, it'd be nice if this is a catalyst to getting them to do something fun and interesting, uh, that would be cool. I'd be here for that. Yeah, like and I'll probably re- re- reiterate this later, but the Good Brothers come, aco- uh, come across like we don't want to wrestle them, and that hasn't been the case before. I mean, shit, at Slammiversary thing, it was the Slammiversary of Bound for Glory, they made the match. They were like, hey, uh, the Bullet Club and uh, who I forgot who the other – oh, the – Finn juice they're gonna wrestle and we'll we'll fight the winner at bound for glory right. you know like they're making matches like they weren't scared of nobody they weren't coming across right. like they didn't there wasn't a team they were ducking and dodging you know they were just like all right uh we'll we'll fight you next it's all good now they're coming across like yo so that's what made it a joke but now it's like well we don't want to wrestle these dudes so you know it, it comes across a little more serious so i can i can dig all right so the renegade group known as Honor No More is back inside the impact zone, but they're they're there to uh there to confront them is Rhino, Rich Swan, Eddie Edwards, Chris Saban, and Josh Alexander. Impact executive vice president Scott Demore comes out and announces a high stakes match for no surrender. Honor No More versus Team Impact. If Honor No More wins, they can stay in Impact Wrestling, but if they lose, they're gone for good. The announcements keep coming as Scott Demore announces Chris Saban versus PCO in tonight's main event. I feel like you just gave away the finish by telling us that Honor No More is basically fighting for a, you know, kayfabe impact contract, um, right. you know, at, at, at the, whatever, at the special event. Um, you know, like, I feel like we all know they're here, right? They're, they're, they're here now. So um, I don't know. To me, that's, just, that's, that's a little anticlimactic, but okay, whatever. Line these jobbers up to get their ass beat. It's, <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, even when the NWO invaded WCW and um, they put together this, the team of Sting and Luger and Macho Man to go against them, like they instantly felt small. And I always hated that because I'm somebody who had grown up on like NWA and like Sting was like the superhero, you know what I mean? And so, but like, once you brought in like Hogan and all these dudes, you instantly minimize Sting. And I, I say that just to say that by putting this group of Rhino, Rich Swan, Eddie Edwards, Chris Sabin, and Josh Alexander together, you're minimizing all of them because we know the attraction here is the honor no more group. Yeah, I, I, I really agree with that, actually. And what we didn't talk about at the top of the show here, and maybe this is what you're alluding to, we didn't talk about the viewership bump. So with this episode, uh, viewership up, went up quite a bit to 182,000, including uh, 68,000 in the, uh, the key demo of 1849. So that was a jump, 44% in total viewership last week. Um, and in, amongst the key demo of 18 to 49, viewership was up 79%. So this is like eight, nine weeks in a row that it's it's going up, 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 up. And this was a big jump. I don't think it's going to – I would imagine it's going to dip this time. I, I, I don't think they're going to build on top of that. I hope that they do. Um, and when I say a dip, I don't mean it's – it's uh, they're going to go down from here. I just mean I, there's probably going to be a dip, but uh, I, I can see them going back up. But – it's um it's exciting. It's you know it says that the Mickey James um Mickey James stuff brought you know brought a lot of attention to the company, a lot of positive social media buzz. Um and and there's also all these things that I've said, "Hey, we have to fix this, this, this and this." They're fixing this, this and this and this and it's a better show now. And you know 
there's lots of people who didn't think those things needed to be fixed. And now look, look at you now, you're really enjoying the show. So um, they're, they're just fixing a lot. And then also the, the honor, no more stuff. Um, you know, Jonah being there, um, they're, they're doing a lot. They're doing a lot. That's getting people talking. And it wasn't too long ago that we were, t- we were saying, you know, all the chatter is within the impact bubble. You know, that we're, we're all talking, but no one gives a shit outside of it. Now it's starting to happen. So, you know, freaking awesome. Um, you know what I think is actually interesting. Sorry, sorry, like jumping to cut you off. I, I think no, like, no. um, you know, I think that um, the 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 bump, right? I think in this case, I think there's there's definitely some bump from the intrigue about Mickey and the Rumble. But I think there's also, I think that like, um, listen, if we're gonna have an honest conversation about Ring of Honor, like Ring of Honor had an amazing and undeniable legacy and effect on the wrestling business that will last forever. But if you saw any, you know, video from any Ring of Honor events lately, their audience has dwindled greatly. And I'm sure there are still those diehards who will always love Ring of Honor. Like, that's their brand. That's their product. They're going to just mess with it forever. And I think that dwindled audience of diehards may have been absorbed by Impact Wrestling. And I think that is probably what what the bump is responsible for. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I think there's a there's a group out there, the ROH faithful, if you will, that probably have some resentment towards AEW because AEW mm-hmm. destroyed Ring of Honor in in many ways, taking their top talent. Now Ring of Honor didn't prepare for that talent to leave. You know they made some mistakes like Impact did, where they weren't developing the next man up. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I but think also, that hurt him. Like with Ring of Honor, though, like the thing is, like where Ring of Honor effed up is like Ring of Honor could have produced all in. Ring of Honor, I believe Ring of Honor was asked to produce all in, but they were like, "Nah, eh, we're good." And I thought like, they you know did. Th- I'm pretty rich. I, I I I can I can you know we can do this. And I, I understood guys, that on the low they produced it, but it wasn't publicly. Like right, right. They didn't want their name on it. Because yeah. they didn't want the whatever the Sears Center or whatever that was like booked and five thousand people be there, but I'm like, but you know they ended up playing theirself and the rest is history. Um, yeah. But like they should have just took the chance because you know, damn it, they're booking out buildings now and getting a tenth of the people in, or they were right, <laughs> they were. So, um, so yeah, man, like you know, I think like you know, like whatever, don't, no, no need to belabor that. But I think that like like I was saying that there's um, a dwindled audience of diehards that still exist for ring of honor. And I think they want to see this talent so bad that I think they've actually, they've come to impact. And, and I just want to say, welcome, welcome. I hope you guys like it uh, here. You know, look around, yeah. uh, put your, the, the, don't stand on the couches. Okay. Order some drinks, tip your waitresses. Okay. And uh, enjoy it. Jump into conversation. So as far as what you were saying, I agree. The, you know, the team impact, if you will, came out. No one was talking. Uh, I think maybe uh, Chris Saban did all the talking. And then I, I was looking at it. I was like, wow, they have a ring full of former world champions. And for some reason, they just feel like five dudes out there. I, I mean, they don't have anyone in that group that has the promo chops to go at it with Maria Canellis and, um, right. Uh, uh, Matt Taven. Uh, Matt Taven. And um, <clears throat> especially not Eddie Edwards. De- definitely not him. Saban, Saban does a pretty good job. but uh, And then Rhino is actually pretty good too. But um, so they, they, well, they did have the, the red track suits, these, these jackets. Uh, they're red, of course. Why wouldn't they be? We don't want to have any kind of color contrast on this show. But uh I think those things will sell like hotcakes if they're on Shop Impact. I mean, they, it, it, it's cool that they're wearing them. You know, Madison Rain had one la- later in the show. You know, they they had some in the past, black ones with like I think red stripes on the arm or something like that. But they came across as some dudes to me, and maybe this is really nitpicky, but I wish they would have come up with a name other than Team Impact. Like that's to just show just out the, you know wrestling 101 you know you got this cool ass name honor no more 
I would have I would have sat there and be like, let's come up with a cool name for these five guys. Mm-hmm. It's a it's really random because remember Willie Mack and and uh, Heath were involved in all this, and now they're just like, hey, you know, uh, Josh is going to step in. Like, I think more is going to play out with Josh Alexander on screen here pretty soon. But it was like this dude was just the champ. Well, I mean, he was a champion for about five seconds. But you have him in these high profile matches, and he's. He wants to get in the title picture and this and this with Moose. And then he just, all of a sudden, he's just going to defend the the Impact name just out of the blue. Like, it just, I thought it devalued him a lot. Just see him come out there and stand there. You know, no one said anything. Just, just Saban did all the talking. And then they right. made the match, Saban versus uh, PCO. I was worried he was going to say PCO versus Rhino. And I was like, yo, <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, thank God he said Chris Saban. But, but I thought this segment was cool. And, you know, Maria Canellas is great. I thought the segment was cool. Yeah. Josh, I mean, not Josh, but Scott came out, of course. Uh, yeah. Got his own music and everything. And um, I guess he was needed for the segment. But I do think that this particular group of five world champions just felt devalued a little bit. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, like, you know, it's, it's just, it's tough, man. Like when you put that many people in a group, it's tough for one person to stand out. Um, and again, like, ah, uh, you know, I want to say this is something to keep Josh Alexander hot, you know, uh, while he's on a detour to, you know, to getting to Moose at probably anniversary. But I just, I think that there's a little bit of a mistake here because again, this is about the, the honor no more group. So I just think they got to be careful here. They got to be careful here and they got to protect their asset. You know what I mean? The asset that's actually theirs, which is something they've been terrible at, you know, in, um, in, 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 in co 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 working situations. Like they've been absolutely awful (laughs) at protecting their, the people they're supposed to be invested in. You know what I mean? So that has been, you know, if, if they do that to Josh Alexander, like if he's out there taking pins from these Ring of Honor dudes, um, I just think it's just, oh man, this is going to be bad news, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like at, at what point do you protect somebody, you know? Like he should be the leader of this group, not Chris Saban. Right. If we're right. talking about everything we see playing out on screen right now. Yo, speaking of Chris Saban, whatever happened to Alex Shelley? Remember Alex so he, Shelley like said, I promise I'm coming back to Impact Wrestling. Like he said this. He said that. Yeah. Well, uh, I think because he's a not only have we not seen him at back in Impact Wrestling, but we've seen him other places. So yeah. what up with that? I don't know. I know he was taken out of the hard to kill main event. I, I want to say he's a travel nurse on the outside. Mm-hmm. Something mm-hmm. something in those realms. Um, you know, my old lady's a nurse, so you know, I get it. Like uh it's very serious for her to get COVID. So like when we all got it a couple of weeks ago, like she couldn't go to work, you know, uh, she does home health. So she's just like, well, I can't, you know, she, she couldn't right. bring it around her client. So I totally get, I, I totally get that. But yeah, we never saw him reappear. And the, in an interview, he had said he was never contracted with shocker. Uh, that's pretty much everyone. It feels like, but he said he was never contracted, you know, I will say the tone of the interview didn't seem like he really cared to come back. Like he no, said good he said some good things, but it sounded like it was Yeah. Good or not. Yeah. Didn't really give a shit, you know? Yeah, right. And exactly and, and like his actions say he didn't give a shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's 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 what's what's uh you know what you can really see here. So um yeah, I just you know it was it was more of a rhetorical question, or whatever happened to Alex Shelley, but I you know, okay, I was, I was like, because at first, like, do you remember Alex Shelley? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Remember that guy? Yeah. <laughs> that, actually, I actually thought about that when I mentioned how Impact doesn't have a tag team division. I was like, oh, yeah, remember they tried this and they just didn't. What's uh, funny is they have, uh, they actually have a lot of tag teams. It just doesn't feel like it. Yeah. But if you look at the roster, you're like, oh, shit, there's actually quite a few. Yeah. They need to just sit down and, like, figure out, they're like, just be like, okay, let, they, I think what they need to do, I think WWE has the same problem. Like, again, they need to just say, again, here's like, here's like our five pillars. And these people are going to be highlighted and booked strong. They're not going to lose. And we'll also find them, you know, like 
we'll we'll have like you know scheduled programming for all of these people to make them look strong up through this next point and then once that person no longer has a title or whatever you still keep them looking strong like that's how you have people who are like oh I'm tuning in this week to see Trey Miguel. I need to see what is Trey Miguel going to do this week. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Because like, growing up as a wrestling fan, right? Like, you had like different people who you just liked. Like, I like Too Cold Scorpio. I was like, yo, I just want to see what Too Cold Scorpio is about to do. Like, I was going to watch the whole show anyway, but I definitely want to see whatever Too Cold Scorpio was talking about. You know what I mean? Like, I want to see what the Harlem Heat was talking about. Like, you can take, you can book individual people strong. Like, they don't have to be the top acts, but it seems like. It's not the impact. Um, They don't do it like WWE. Like, I feel like WWE intentionally cuts out the legs of everyone but their top, top acts. And I think they do that on purpose to make sure that only their, you know, elite stars look like main eventers. But impact just doesn't build other people strongly. You know what I'm saying? It's like, again, like we talk about again, like if you're Jake something, right? Like, you should be dragging in here, dragging jobbers around the impact zone every week. You know what I mean? And then like every now and then when you face like a rhino or something like that, then you win. And then eventually when you get a title match, you can even lose and still go back to looking strong because you look strong all the, all the way along the way. You know what I'm saying? So they just don't believe in doing that. Well, I actually think they're doing a better job of it than in the past because Steve Macklin's an example. Like they did a lot to build him up, and he's taken two losses in a row. But he's still, I, I still think he's he's come across strong. You're laughing here, but a lot of people like him, dude. Yeah, I, I, I listen. I, look, people like what they like, man. They like what they like. I'm just saying, like, uh, I just, I, I, you know, the, the dude to me, Steve Macklin. Like, I just feel like. I don't know. Like I said, I just, I just don't see anything like especially entertaining about the, about this guy. Um, but like you know, I, I got you know whatever. I got respect for everybody who does their thing, man. It's just like, it's just I don't know. It, nothing nothing connects with me that he just does. I don't know. But I so but I think. But I also let me say you're right though. You're right. He's someone who has been. Uh, he's been. He's been. He's he's been kept very strong. Yeah, and I remember I sent a, a tweet out. This was maybe. It was prior to Slammiversary. And I was like, you know, I wasn't trying to talk shit, but I asked the legitimate question. I was like, who's hot right now in Impact? Can you can anyone name someone who's won more than two matches in a row? You know, like I was like, who has momentum right now? Gia Miller. And, Gia Miller. <laughs> and there was nobody on the roster at the time that had any kind of momentum whatsoever. And I feel this time, you know. I think uh, Josh Alexander has momentum. You know, I think Jonah has momentum. I I think Macklin does. I think Trey Miguel does. Um, And that's just off the top of my head right now. You know, um, I think they're doing a better job of it. So while I agree with you, I also think there's a lot of improvement. So, yeah. So what do we got? We, We would agree that they can get better. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's better as far as like just creating a roster of people. Like, okay, so you, you watched the Royal Rumble last night, right? Um, did you notice they were doing the thing that I always talk about, where they go catch some some fans outside of the stadium and they're like, Oh, hey, uh yep. you know, who are you looking forward to seeing tonight? And by the way, listening to these kids, I could tell they were just reading stuff that the producer wrote for them. Like, you know what I mean? They were like, Oh. I like Bianca Belair because she's the strong S or I like, uh, I like Sasha Banks because she's the boss. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Like the way they were saying it, like you can just tell that this was like pre-produced, but it doesn't matter. You know why? Because 99.9% of the people aren't going to see it like that. They're going to be like, Oh yeah. 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 yeah, It's cool. I should look at it like that, you know? And so, um, it's just another example of like an opportunity to impact is missing for like, you know, I know it's COVID and everything, but it's like, dog, if you're going to be out there, man, like just, just do the shit, man. Just do it. Just yeah. Do it. And I want, you know, I want to see some new faces too, because they, they have a habit and I'm going to say it's a habit of getting the same people on screen every episode. And there, there was a, at the pay-per-view at hard to kill, 
there was several s- spots where wrestlers ended up in the crowd. Right? And I don't think it was by design. I think it was, and it's the same. It was, it's the same like four or five people that we see on TV every week that the camera puts, give screen time to. Yeah. And it's like, I just think it would, it would be beneficial to get out, talk to the fans, much like you're saying, and it just, and just see some different faces. Hey, you know, we're excited about impact because of this, yes. you know, it's, it's yes. just, it's just like the same dudes. It was, a uh, I don't remember what pay-per-view, I think it was slam anniversary in the first match they showed. I, I'm going to say, well, I'll say it out the first match within the first 30 minutes of the show. They must have shown five or six fans up close on the screen. I knew all of them from Twitter. Like I knew, I knew every single one. You know, franchise, and, and, uh, Christine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I just, I do think it would be beneficial to get out there, like talk to the fans, and um, and make it look like it's not the same people watching the show every week. You know right. what I mean? Totally. For the agree. same people at the show, because I think that's right. what hurt the Orlando stuff you know like the first the front row is the same people every episode and we all knew mm-hmm. who they were you know um let me ask this I question think super fans aren't a bad thing so much but like no, whatever no. but you got but you gotta show that there's more than them right right that yeah that, that that's all that all that i'm saying um like i i've always i've never wanted to come across like a super fan at an impact show i've um when i used to go to orlando i sat off screen uh, I sat behind the camera. I always did. Uh, you know, Bound for Glory, I don't, you know, I didn't sit where I was going to be on screen. I, I don't sit in a general admission, but I sit far away. And it's also because, I don't know, just as a content creator, like a lot of people re- recognize me when I go to the shows. And I, I prefer to blend in a little bit rather than just be in the front, like, hey, look at me, and then be all rah rah on TV. That's just not right, my personality. Right. So uh, um, I want to ask this question before. We move on. Did you, because uh, I was listening to Brace for Impact, shout out to Mike, and they were talking about the sound quality of this show. And I'm always saying, hey, I got an ear for sound quality. And I felt dumb because I didn't hear it. Uh, I, I, I hear when it's too loud and when it's, when it's uh, distorted and stuff like that. But I, I'm guessing the sound quality for this particular episode wasn't good. I didn't really pick up on that. Granted, I couldn't hear the crowd there clearly was a smaller crowd than the last set of tapings, but I could hear them in a sense that I knew they were engaged with what was going on. It it wasn't like I didn't like it was crickets. I didn't hear crickets, you know, but I, but I could hear if anything, I think we talked a little bit about compressing audio last week and mixing a file down to a certain quality. Um, and it seemed like they, uh, mix it down to like 128 bits like it was it was that's that's my guess is that they they mix it to an even lower quality because the more you do that the the cheaper the audio just sounds so that that's my assumption but i didn't hear it did you hear like in particular that just didn't sound good um so the thing that i noticed is the lack of crowd noise um and and if you notice, uh, you know, a lot of the fans who go to the shows will post videos from being at the show. And the thing that I like about those videos is you get true sound, right? Like from yeah. somebody who's sitting in the crowd, you can hear if people are actually really cheering. And my takeaway from watching like fan videos for people who are at the shows is that, um, yeah, it doesn't sound like there's 40,000 people there, but the fans are louder than what comes across on TV. And, um, you know, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to hear those fans being loud on TV because the fans are a very important part of the show and fans hear other fans on TV. And so they know to go to the show and be loud and make noise. So would you, um, oh, sorry, yeah. sorry. I thought you were no, no. continuing. No, I am done. Go, go. Would you pipe in crowd noise? Like, so when we had the empty arena shows, they piped in crowd noise. At first it sounded like shit. And then as the as the episodes progressed it was natural to what they found ways to make it natural to what was going on in the ring because at first it was like you know they would do a hot tag in a match and you would just hear nothing yeah eventually they edited it to the point there would be a hot tag and they found you know they yep a crowd reaction and i 
I had said when they went back to having fans, I said I would like for them to keep the piped in crowd at about 20% of the volume that it currently is at, just enough for almost a white noise. I mean, do you think that with an episode like this where, okay, so clearly we couldn't hear the crowd like we do on the last set, like, do you think that they should have done something like that just to, to thicken it up? <laughs> you know, uh... Uh, I remember from like from recording vocals, we had, we had certain people, whether they sing or rap, that just didn't have a thick voice. So they had to do a second track in the background and we turned the volume down till just 10 or 20%. You right. couldn't even hear it, but it just thickened up their vocal a little bit yep. and it just sounded better. So, yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, hell yeah. Because you know what? The biggest, richest wrestling company in the world, WWE, they sweeten up their crowd noise all the time. I saw an article today where somebody was, um, you know, quote unquote, calling out WWE for sweetening up the crowd noise on Naomi. And I was like, man, fuck you because i'm just like like it, it, that shit annoys me when like you know these things come out surrounding certain people um and i'm like um they they sweeten up the crowd noise for everybody everybody like they just they have been doing that for the exact reasons that i talk about like you're training fans like listen i believe it was i could be wrong about this but i believe it was the 2015 royal rumble where john cena came out and the philly crowd was singing John Cena sucks. John Cena sucks. And every crowd after that was singing, John Cena sucks. John Cena sucks. Okay, like that's that's a perfect example of, you know, monkey see, monkey do. Like in wrestling fans see, wrestling fan do, right? Wrestling fans see the NXT crowds, you know, uh, uh, batting around beach balls and going, ole, 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 ole. And now that's what you do. That's what they all do, right? And so, right. Um, so I think uh, to answer your question, like, yes, Impact should do that because Impact needs to train its audience. And honestly, like uh, I had gotten on a mid nineties WWE kick this past you know week or so, like in preparing for the Rumble, I went back to watch some old Royal Rumbles. And I was trying to think to myself, like, man, like, you know, how did WWE get to a point where their crowds were, were how they taught their crowds to be so active and engaged in the show. And I don't have an answer for you just yet. Like as a kid, the thing that I remember being the trigger for that was I remember when Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart were beefing. And I remember Shawn Michaels saying to Bret Hart something to the effect of like, you may think you can tell these people what to do, but these people pay their good hard earned money and they can boo or cheer anybody they want. And I swear in my mind, that was like the turning point where fans were just losing their shit at WWE shows all the time. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I feel like as a kid, that's when I first noticed it. Uh, and, um, and I felt like that's when I really started noticing like the fans being super vocal about everything at WWE shows. Um, and so like, how does impact get to get to doing that? Well, Here's the thing, though, I think, um, and I'm not even sure this is exactly what we were talking about, but <laughs> but I think that, um, I think that, um, the, I call it the John Cena promo, right? Like, if you ever break down the anatomy of a John Cena promo, like, it is 100% designed to rile up a crowd in the middle of nowhere, in, you know, in, in, in the dead of the year where it's not close to Royal Rumble, not close to WrestleMania. I just need to come out here and get this crowd hyped up for the show. But like his promos, they, they build and build and build and they do all the, you know, the, the cheap pop things, you know what I mean? Like, but by the time he's finished, the crowd is stirred and yelling you know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. And, and and people could be like, yo, it's formulaic, it's corny. People could say whatever they want, but it works. Like mm. 10 times out of 10, it works. And that's not just because John Cena's smart. They're trained to do it that way. They are trained to talk to the crowd in a way that's going to elicit a reaction. You know what I mean? Like Daniel Bryan in his book talked a lot about how they would have promo class with Vince McMahon and, and like, you know, personally get a chance to like learn from Vince McMahon and his marketing technique, right? Like that's why it's designed. That's why, you know, it gets, it sounds very corny, but people 
in WWE, they know how to say their catchphrase in a way that people catch along. You know what I mean? If you smell, you know, like, so uh, again, it's all designed to get the crowd into it, make them feel like part of the show. And you need the crowd to do that. You want the crowd to do that. So if sweetening the crowd noise is the first step towards getting more active and engaged audiences, then yes, sweeten that shit. Dump all the sugar on it. Okay. (laughs) Turn it up to 50. All right, so let's move on to what uh, what we got next. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, so pretty much, uh, Tennille Dashwood's unable to compete in tonight's scheduled knockouts world tag team title match between the influence and the inspiration. Taking her place will be the influence's loyal photographer Caleb with a K in what is now a non-title bout. Madison tells Caleb with a K not to screw anything up. Then Scott Demore takes Honor No More to a scheduled part of the Charles Dodge Center in Fort Lauderdale and tells them to wait there until the main event. Former ROH owner Carrie Silken is disgusted by Honor No More's behavior and tells them they never had any honor to begin with. So next we got the Knockouts Tag Team Champions, the Inspiration versus the Influence, Madison Rain and Caleb with a K. Um, This was about as good as you probably expected it to be. And uh, let's see. The influence, unique offense, kicking Madison with the DDT, her own partner. Uh, Lee kicks Caleb's phone out of his hand, then gets him in a pinning predicament to win. Wow. There is very little effort put into these descriptions. Um, yeah, so the inspiration beat Madison Rain and Caleb with a K. Caleb ate the pin. And let's see, Austin, Ace Austin bit off more than he can chew by offering speedball Mike Bailey's friend by offering to be speedball mike bailey's friend uh gail kim announces that after the attack from bullet club tonight mike bailey jake something ace austin and madman fulton will take on jay white chris bay and the gorillas of destiny next thursday then we got a promo for the quintessential diva giselle shaw coming to impact wrestling um then we got to see the impact world tag team champions the good brothers and violent by design they agree to keep their alliance intact in order to fend off a threat from the Bullet Club. Uh, Gail Kim introduces Knockouts World Champion Mickey James back in the ring as she addressed the Knockouts division just 48 hours before competing in the Royal Rumble match. Mickey praises the division and its champions, the Knockouts World Tag Team Champions, the Inspiration, the Digital Media Champion Jordan Grace, and even her fierce rival, ROH Women's World Champion and AAA Reina De Reina's champion, Deanna Perrazzo. The Virtuosa storms off, calling this a waste of her time. Mickey continues as she declares victory in Saturday's Royal Rumble <laughs> and says that she will be <laughs> making history as the first outside champion to compete in the match. Chelsea Green confidently states that Mickey will win the Royal Rumble and lays out a challenge for the knockouts title opportunity in the future. Just as Mickey is about to accept Chelsea Green's uh, challenge, the current number one contender, Tasha Steeles, interrupts and reminds them that she will challenge for the knockouts world title on February 19th at No Surrender. Tensions begin to build and a huge brawl breaks out when Tasha hits Mickey with the X that she got from the Ultimate X match. Um, she's carrying that around now, like the money in the bank thing. Uh, Mickey James and Chelsea Green turn the tide, sending Tasha Stills and Sasha Evans retreating up the ramp. Savannah Steve Evans Macklin. says Sasha. Oh, did I say Sasha? <laughs> yes, Sasha, Sasha Evans, you said. Sasha Evans. <laughs> Sasha Evans, Sailor Moon, whatever. Um, <laughs> Steve Macklin tells Gia Miller, The only reason he lost to ROH world champion Jonathan Gresham last week is because the match was contested under pure rules. Jonathan Gresham interrupts and challenges him to a rematch under traditional wrestling rules next week, but it won't be for the ROH title. So that tells me Macklin's going to win. I think Mm -hmm. Macklin's going to get a win against Jonathan Gresham. Uh, (laughs) Yo. (laughs) Oh, man. When Jonathan Gresham came into this 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 picture to interrupt the interview um the height dis- difference is like it, it was stark yeah jarring like i was like yeah. oh man wow Woo. <laughs> um, all right um digital media champion jordan grace accepts matt cardona's challenge for the digital media title 
digital media title. Then we got The Learning Tree, VSK, Zicky Dice, and six other nobodies with uh, versus W. Morrissey in an eight-on-one handicap match. Anybody want to guess how this went? Anybody want to guess how this went? Okay. <laughs> w. Morrissey destroyed absolutely everybody. And um, after the match, Brian Myers left the commentary table and confronted Morrissey. Then Impact World Champion Moose hits the ring and attacks Morrissey from behind. All eight members of the learning tree rejoin the fray, but Morrissey breaks free. Morrissey turns around and gets caught with a vicious spear from Moose. Quick question. Do you think they're turning Morrissey babyface? Yeah, I, I think he's definitely already is one. Um, he tried to cut the promo to where he was trying to say – he tried to cut a heel promo a couple weeks ago that w- was like, I don't – you know cheer me but this and this and this i don't remember exactly what he said but it seems like they're leaning into it um i don't particularly like matches like this the the two on one three on one whatever it's not realistic to me if i'm wrestling with my eight and nine year old in the living room because it's two on one one of them's going to distract me and the other one's going to jump on me and get some <laughs> some offense in it, it's just <laughs> That's just how it is. You know, uh, <laughs> when you sit here just taking on eight dudes, like, uh, they, it, it, I thought it was the worst part of the show. I didn't think it was, like, bad. You know, I think they did an okay job with what they were trying to go for, uh, especially if it's set up with something with Brian Myers. But I, I thought they just – I think the learning tree is so stale right now. I think when they got rid of Sam Beal – and even Manny Lemons to an extent, because at least he, he just had a funny look to him to where these guys just, they're just some jabrones, you know, like, yeah. um, Brian Myers must have a wrestling Dice is not a really funny wrestler. What's that? No, he's not. Are, are these guys from Brian Myers' wrestling school? I think it's very possible. Uh, like, I don't know that he has a wrestling school, but it just would make sense. It's like where he's just, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, there is one of his students because that's how, okay. uh, you know, because I was talking to Manny Lemons actually recently, and he, you know, at first it was supposed to be him and Sam Beal in a learning tree, and uh, but he said, you know, VSK came on because that's his student, and he wanted him to get um, some shine. You know, he didn't say that in a talking shit manner by, by any stretch. He right. said, I, I get it, I do the same thing, but um, I, I would imagine these guys all have some kind of connection to him. Uh, they they look like, you know, bingo hall wrestlers, every one of them. You know, and it just, it's just not funny, man. It, I don't dig it. Like the, the initial learning tree was fun. It was entertaining. This isn't man. This is bad. Yeah. Um. All right. So Raj Singh says that his luck is going to turn around next week when he introduced the brightest blue chip athlete from Punjab, Bupinder Gujar. Uh, John Schuyler interrupts and says that if Impact doesn't have time for him, they definitely don't have time for Bupinder Gujar. Raj challenges him to a match on Bupinder's behalf, and Skyler accepts. So next week we're getting that, which will, I'm sure will be a banger. Uh, Johnny heel Springer versus heel. Versus, yes. <laughs> and and, and uh, Bupinder was, was initially part of the original Desi Hit Squad, mm-hmm. and he has a couple Impact appearances. Uh, <clears throat> he's, he's got a great look. So, I mean, I think that they're taking uh, Rohit's – planned creative and having Raj do it. That's my ass- assumption. I could be way off base, but I mean, Raj mm-hmm. just shows up on TV all of a sudden. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so, All right. So we had Johnny Swinger versus Jonah. Uh, jo- <laughs> Earlier today, Jonah gave Johnny Swinger a painful preview of what's to come when he assaulted him in the backstage area. AEW's Dan Lambert is seen watching from the crowd. Jonah makes quick work of his co- opponents as he hits two running sentons, followed by the tsunami splash for three. Uh, after the bell, Jonah is about to add insult to injury when Decay comes to the aid of Johnny Swinger. So that's interesting. Where is where was Havoc? Uh, when Mickey James did her State of the Knockouts address, I, I enjoyed it personally. It seemed like there was, they were like, the ring is surrounded by the knockouts. It seemed like there was like six girls there. Because there was no Tennille, there was no Havoc. 
There was there was a, a, several girls missing. It just seemed like, but it was weird that Havoc wasn't there. There definitely should have been more people on around the ring at the time. And um, is that a result of the fact they just don't have enough knockouts to be filling around that ring area? Could be. You know, the, the division's a lot bigger now. I I can't imagine. Like I, I mean, right off the top of my head, there was no Tennille and no Havoc. We know that. Um, I'm I'm trying to think. There were some other girls that weren't there, uh, and usually Lady Rachel Claire's Ellering's out there. Her. She wasn't, but she's yeah, not. Yeah, Rachel, what's the deal the with Rachel? I don't think. What's the update on Rachel? You guys are the worst. Actually, she, man, was that the yeah. worst tweet of all time? Yeah, that didn't work out. I, I think she's done. There's nothing that suggests she's still part of the company. There's there's no right. there's exactly. nothing to suggest that. Maybe that could be your next interview. <laughs> uh, oh, trust me, it's on. It's a, so Rachel doesn't like doing podcasts. I I I know that from listening to her on podcasts. Uh, but I'm not a I'm not an interviewer that asks what's your favorite, what's your dream match, and what how did you train? Uh, and I know she doesn't like asking answering questions about her dad. So. Um, I've, I'm planning how to approach this cause I do want to get a hold of her. Uh, but it, it may be one of those things that I might have to wait till I actually see her in person somewhere, uh, which I've seen her a couple times. So it's not impossible. Uh, but it might be one of those things I need to see her in person and, uh, might have to pitch it to her because she even puts it out on Twitter. Like, do not hit me up for podcast interviews. So the best way for me to do it is to probably just, uh, hit her up in person, let her know that, you know, that that's my strategy personally, Mister Marketing. You know, when I pre- approach someone for an interview, I usually like to let them know how it's going to be different than what yeah. else they're. Mm-hmm. You know, um, mm-hmm. how I'm going to approach it differently than other people. You say I'm going to ask you what's your favorite ice cream. Okay, right. <laughs> ask you if you could ask God one question, what would it be? Yeah, if you were a tree, <laughs> what kind of tree would you be? Is it wrong to pee in the shower? There's always the water's already running and there's a drain right there. Tell us, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> the name Rachel gets an awful rap. Do you think that's fair? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so we had our, I believe this is the main event PCO with Honor No More. Uh, Mike Bennett, Maria Carlos, Matt Saban, and Vincent versus Chris Saban with Team Impact, which was Rhino, Rich Swan, Eddie Edwards, and Josh Alexander. Who will gain momentum in the war between Impact Wrestling and Honor No More? We'll find out in our Impact main event. Saban attempts a cradle shock, but struggles to pick PCO up off his feet. Honor No More trips up Saban from ringside. Turnabout is fair play as Eddie Edwards returns the favor to PCO, but the referee catches him and ejects impact from ringside. PCO clothesline Saban over the top rope, then soars through the air with, to, with a dive to the outside. PCO hits the top rope swanton, colliding with him on the apron. PCO crashes and burns with the PCO salt, allowing Saban to build momentum. Saban hits the top rope crossbody for two. Saban counters with counters a Vader bomb attempt, but Honor No More provides a distraction from ringside. Saban takes them out with a flurry of offense. Moments later, Maria distracts the referee, opening the door for Bennett to push Saban off the top. PCO hits a modified full Nelson bomb to win. So after the match, Honor No More continues the assault on Saban, but Team Impact quickly evens the odds. Alexander locks in the ankle lock on Vincent as Team Impact sends Honor No More scurrying. Impact goes off the air. What'd you think about this episode as a whole? What'd you think about the main event episode as a whole? The more I hear you say Team Impact, I'm just like, man, they it's just not original. This, you know, feud could have benefited from just something. Um, you know, I thought the match was okay, actually. PCO for what he does, for what he is, he makes it work. You know, and Chris Saban is always very enter- entertaining. What I picked up from this most was there's a tease that Eddie Edwards is going to turn on these dudes. Mm. I say tease. 
it's very blatant. I don't know if I want to say they're not doing a good job. I just, I just think it's coming across a lot more blatant than they want it to come across. I think they want to tease it, hmm. but it's it, to me, it comes off so obvious that I think that they're not going to do it. Hmm. I don't, um, I don't think no surrender was taped already. I could be wrong. I want to, I want to say it's recorded. I, I don't, I don't know, but I personally hope that it, they don't go heel with Eddie Edwards because I don't think he would be a good one. I don't mm. think he has the chops even a little bit to be a heel. Like you got to be able to talk a little bit, and I just don't think he he has that. Um, and you know we we've referenced the Royal Rumble quite a bit here, and I hadn't watched um, a pay per view in several months, and maybe this is an unfair comparison, but. I saw Becky Lynch come out and she's, you know, she used to do the thing. I'm the man and this, and now she's, you know, big time Bex. And she just looks different, carries herself a little bit different, but has, has a different look. And it's like, she understands, you know, this is something Chris Jericho understands more than anybody, how to rebrand yourself uh, to avoid being stale. And I just immediately thought of Eddie Edwards Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, they, they eventually re, rebranded him into the hardcore gimmick, which I've said before, I, I think hardcore wrestling is a very dying uh, genre of wrestling that I don't think anyone really cares about anymore. They're trying to tap into ECW. They're like, hey, if we can make another Tommy Dreamer, then he'll, you know, they're trying to make another Tommy Dreamer with him. And... At first, I was very well received because Eddie was as white meat of baby face as you could. I mean, in the dictionary next to white meat, white meat baby face was Eddie Edwards and a picture of John, C- John Cena going, damn, look at this guy, you know. Um, so they, they did well, but we're talking about three years later now. It's the same dude. There's mm-hmm. no it's it's. I mean, there's no change. There's no, 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 nothing. He's still running out with the kendo stick. Right, uh, right. I think that's getting like really, really tired personally, the, the Kenny thing. Um, and I like Eddie Edwards. I, you know, I, I definitely like Eddie Edwards, but I just saw the Becky Lynch thing, saw her rebranding himself. And I remember she was Becky two belts or whatever it was like some people get it. And some, some don't, you know what I mean? And they got to right. do with him, but I don't think this is it. I, I don't think, I think uh, they missed the boat to turn him heel back when they initially were doing everything with him. But when they change him, it was by accident because it wasn't something planned. It was just organic because of what happened with Sammy Callahan and that incident with the bat. Had that not mm-hmm. happened, we'd still probably be staring at the same dude that mm-hmm. we, we saw before. So, um, I do think he needs change, but I don't think he's, I don't think he would be a good heel. I, I think it would come across really bad personally. I could be wrong. Maybe he blows it out the water, but I don't know. I think it's yeah, also think like, what would he even change to? I mean, like, I'm just, I'm, I'm curious. I mean, like I couldn't have told you, like you, you gave the example of like going from the man to big time Bex. That almost seems like a logical progression for Becky Lynch because it's like, uh, you know, she she won people over being the man, right? Um, which is like this anti-hero. But then it's like, the, okay, you you can you can't be the anti-hero when you got three. This is Sports Center commercials, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. you know, you can only be the scrappy underdog for so long. Um, you know, uh, eventually you got to uh, you got you got to switch it up. So I think for Eddie Edwards, right? Like I think it's. It's interesting. I'd be interested to see like how his character could evolve. It's tough too because um, um, he was this, you know, pure wrestler type, and like with the gimmick change, like you know, he's just he's changed his body so much. Um, and like, I don't want to be harsh here because you know what I mean. I, I I don't know if he like you know struggles with like depression or anything like that. I'm sure hearing people talk about the kind of shape he's in does not feel good 
So, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to be like, you know, uh, harsh or anything like that. But I'm just saying it'd be tough for him to go back to being pure wrestler guy, you know? Um, Mr. I'm the GHC champion or whatever. Um, yeah. Like, I just, I don't know. Like, I don't know if this, if this version, if this incarnation of Eddie Edwards is like GHC champion type guy, you know? So, yeah. So, I, I don't know. I just think you got to find something sometimes to to update yourself mm-hmm. chris jericho is the best example in wrestling in, in in all of wrestling that's my personal opinion yeah how do you uh, you know uh shit when he started aew and he if he had this gimmick for a little while that was he wanted yeah. people to tell him thank thank you right you, you know what i mean like it's just little things you know but it's like it, it just works it catches on it makes someone feel fresh like he's a jericho's a little stale at the moment uh, but that, you know, I believe that he'll change that, but I don't think, I, I just don't think the heel thing would be good yeah. personally. I feel like a lot of AEW is pretty stale right now. Like, I feel like they have like a lot of, to me, I think AEW is very interesting in the sense that like they play to their diehards and they're like, okay, we have our audience and we don't care what other people think. But I'm like, I just feel like, man, I feel like they, a lot of their shit has a shelf life, man. You know what I mean? I feel like yeah. a lot of their shit has a shelf life. Like, it's like for, for example, they had a match last week with Adam Cole and Orange Cassidy where the ending yeah. was, you know, Orange Cassidy gave Adam Cole the weakest looking hug ever. And they together dived off the platform through the stage and Orange Cassidy covered Adam Cole for the pin. And it's like, that looks really bad. It looks yeah, really so bad. bad. It looks really fake. But the AEW diehards won't say it. So that so so that that's what we have here, right? Like we have the people who are so committed to liking this product that they can't even acknowledge that something bad is being put on TV. They can't acknowledge that nothing about Hangman Page says star. They can't acknowledge that. You know what I mean? Like they can't acknowledge that Chris Jericho is not funny anymore. He's not funny anymore. He's not cool anymore. You know what I mean? And I, just, I just think it's really interesting. I think it's really interesting because it's like, we just, we got this audience. We know who this audience is. This audience isn't going to grow because we won't change. And we're just going to milk this audience for all it's worth. So I just think that that's where they seem to be. And I think that's just a really interesting uh, place to be. And I noticed watching the rumble, I'm like, man, they really, WWE really, knows how to i don't know how to say what i'm trying to say they got a lot of stars who are bigger dudes Mm -hmm. and they feel like stars and they feel like bigger dudes and and it's they they look dominant feel dominant and then i was like man aw put the smallest possible wrestlers at the top you know they're unbeatable. I, you know, I've said that Jungle Boy, you got to shoot him in the chest with a gun <laughs> to beat him. It's the wildest shit, dog. It, it you is know. the wildest shit. <laughs> like, I don't get it. I don't get it. Especially like, you know, Cody Rhodes, right? Who's like a wrestling purist, you know what I mean? Because, or, or pro wrestling purist, you know what I mean? Because like, you know, he grew up in the business. And like, I, I, I think he understands, but his thing too, I think Cody probably sees it a little bit differently because he's not a particularly big guy, right? And so like he, you know, standing next to Randy Orton, Cody Rose looks small, but so he probably sees himself as like the defender of the smaller wrestler, but it's like, bro, like, come on, man. Like, I think the Young Bucks were undefeated for like a year or some shit. Like, it's just, come on. I, I don't know, whatever. Dog. It's, it's like, again, it's like, they just... It, if you're an AEW fan or supporter, it's just like, la, 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 oh la, Oh, my God, la. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wrong. man. I think that's all we got, man. You got anything else for today? No. Um, so we're going to be debuting a new show, the Cool Factor Mailbag Show. Uh, it'll be coming out a couple a couple days after the Cool Factor on most weeks. There's going to be some where we probably skip it, but it's going to come out on most weeks. If you enjoy enjoy the if you join the Impact Lounge engagement group on Facebook, um, priorities will be given to the questions from that group. So before we do an episode, I'll make a post what questions you have for us. Uh, we'll still look 
at Twitter, still look at YouTube, uh, but the the priority will be will come from that group. So check out the uh, you know Impact Lounge engagement group on Facebook so that you can get involved. But uh, you know this next episode uh, after we review that, uh, we'll we'll be be knocking out um, the first version of this. You know we got a lot, a lot of questions already ready to go, and it's gonna be strictly a mailbag show. It's gonna yeah. help Cool Factor be a little shorter and uh, give you guys some extra content. All right. All right, man. So, um, yeah, so you, so real quick before we get out of here, BQ, tell the people where they can find you on social. You mentioned the Impact Lounge Engagement Group, but go ahead and tell more about the people where they can find you on social. So we also got the Impact Lounge on Facebook and then at the Impact Lounge on Twitter, at the Impact Lounge on Instagram, and at BQ Speaks on Twitter. That's right. And you can find me at TW talking about on your social media of choice. You can also follow uh, my podcast, the uh, talking about pod. Follow me on Twitter at talking about pod. Uh, you can find my YouTube channel talking about pod. Matter of fact, you can go there right now and go subscribe to the talking about pod. I got some new content coming out for you guys uh, later this week. And yeah, man, like, you know, every comment, you know, every rating, every share is very much appreciated um the most important thing you guys can do to help out the show is bring more people into the conversation so tell a friend to tell a friend and uh for bq i'm tw see you next time peace